Every year, hundreds of people from all walks of life go missing in the remote wilderness areas of North America. What was supposed to be nothing more than a relaxing and recharging getaway to the mountains has, for some people, turned into nothing less than a nightmare. The strange thing about these disappearances is their extremely mysterious nature. For many cases, the individual that disappears is someone who's experienced in outdoor recreation. They know what they're doing. They're usually prepared. It's unlike them to put themselves in situations where something could go terribly wrong. Yes, there's only so much one can do to prepare for a life and death situation in the wilderness, a potential survival situation. However, a lot of these incidents happen on well-used trails. A person was seen one second and seemingly gone the next. Sometimes the person's backpack will be found and in perfect condition containing all of their packed belongings that you would think to be essential for the outdoors. It's as if they just placed their pack on the ground and walked off. Sometimes items of clothing will be found in perplexing locations. Perhaps a jacket that would be needed to help keep warm, or a pair of boots that are without a doubt mandatory to have on your feet while traveling through rough mountain terrain. Tales of strange disappearances are all over the web. Just have a look for yourself. It happens every single year. People do get lost due to inexperience in the wilderness. There's cases where people get kidnapped and are never seen from again. There's explanations for a number of these disappearances, but there's a large amount of genuinely mysterious and unexplained disappearances that are extremely difficult to piece together and make any sense of. To many, the answers to these cases reside in the world of the supernatural. Something paranormal is responsible. Something otherworldly. Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. On July 19th, 1991, a 12-year-old boy named Jared Negretti disappeared in San Bernardino National Forest. He was part of a scout group who were trying to summit Mount San Gorgonio, which is a peak of about 11,500 feet. Along the way to the top, uh, Jared was kind of left behind. He was struggling physically to keep up with the group and um, they didn't really notice until they got near the peak. Now there was another group of hikers on the trail who crossed paths with Jared on their way up. And when they got to the group of scouts at the top of the mountain, they told the scout leader, they said, look, this kid, we, we came across him and he was cutting switchbacks on the way down. He was struggling. And supposedly the scout leader said, oh, okay, we'll just, we'll get him on the way back down. We'll meet up with him and everything will be fine. For some reason, they thought it was okay. I guess maybe the attitude at the time was that everything was fine, it was a nice day, the weather wasn't crazy, everything seemed normal, everyone was happy. I'm sure the rest of the scouts were happy to get to the top of the mountain. But Jared was never seen again. They, they went back down to find him and he was gone. The last time he was seen was at 6 p.m. as he was cutting through these switchbacks. Now, when you cut switchbacks, it's a very dangerous thing to do because the trail's zigzagging up or down the mountain, uh, left or right, to make the incline less steep. But eventually, if you're heading down the mountain, that zigzagging, that switchback is gonna end and the trail's gonna go left or right. But if you don't know when the last zigzag is, when the last cutback is, you're gonna go past the end of the trail, the end of the switchback. And then you're going to keep going down the mountain expecting to come up on the trail again and it won't be there. And you know, at that point it's very easy to get lost. So that's more than likely what happened to Jared. Because at the bottom of that zigzag, that's where they found his backpack, which had beef jerky in it. There were candy wrappers. They found a camera that Jared had with him. Now the very interesting thing about this is that there was a roll of film in the camera and they were able to get it developed. There were 12 photos on it. And the last photo on that roll of film was this. This is the actual photo of Jared, the last picture of him ever taken. And it's kind of disturbing in my opinion, just a picture of his eyes and nose. But the weird thing is if you look on the right side of the photo, to me this looks like an eye, like the reflection of an eye 
I don't know if that's what it actually is, if it's a trick of the light, of the camera flash, or something going on with the lens. I don't know if it's a double exposure, because this was a film camera. This is back in 1991. But it really does kind of look like an eye of something behind him, over his left shoulder. So what is going on here? What happened to Jared? There were, they say, as many as 3,000 people looking for him over the, the course of the search putting in 45,000 hours of time combing the area looking for this kid. And his body was never found. They did find footprints that apparently matched his shoes, uh, but they couldn't ever find the body. It's been over 30 years and there hasn't been a sign of him. They had helicopters, they had infrared, you know, I'm sure they had dogs looking for him. And these dogs that work with search and rescue, they're trained to find people, they're trained to find bodies. I find it very unusual that when they put in that much effort, they can't find the body. They find the backpack, they find the food, you know, they find his camera. I think they found his canteen as well, but no body. You know, if you have dogs, you can use that backpack to, you know, tell them like, that's the scent you have to go after and they'll go after it. I don't know why they thought it was a good idea to just leave him behind. I guess if, if they didn't notice he was lagging behind, if they were racing to the top, which apparently they were, the kids were very excited and they were going really fast. They were trying to get to the top and, and you know, in the moment, they probably didn't know that he was far behind. For a 12 year old, he was a pretty big kid. He was, you know, 150 pounds, supposedly. And um, he just couldn't do it, but they say, his spirits were high that day before this all happened. He was in a good mood. He was excited to go hiking. He was excited to go to the top of the mountain. But things didn't turn out the way they should have. You'd think over the course of the years with that many people going through the area that he would have been found. But what happened to him? Did he get attacked by an animal? Did he get drug off by a mountain lion? There were no signs around any of his stuff that would indicate that. That would indicate some sort of struggle. Um, you know, usually if there's an animal attack and the person's killed, there's a remnants of the body. The entire body doesn't just disappear. There's usually, you know, bits of the person and items of clothing left scattered around. But there was nothing here other than the backpack with stuff in it and the camera. Now in that photo, they suspect that maybe he was using the camera flash to see in the dark because you can see like it's very underexposed everything behind him is underexposed except his face where the flash hit maybe he was doing that maybe he was trying to get a picture of whatever this thing was behind him if there is something actually there i'm just saying it looks like there's something behind him it looks very creepy to me it looks like an eye but what if it is something what is it what is it? If he's standing up, it's something that's, you know, at least as tall as him. Sasquatch? Another person? Who knows? There's always a possibility of, uh, of kidnapping or abduction by another human being. But there's also the possibility of kidnapping and abduction by Sasquatch beings. There's lots of stories and lore around that. You have the famous case of Albert Ostman who was taken at night in, on the west coast of British Columbia while he was sleeping in his sleeping bag. A Sasquatch comes and picks him up. As he's in the sleeping bag, it picks up the whole sleeping bag and carries him off up the mountain. The story of Seraphine Long, an indigenous woman who was out foraging and, and picking firewood and whatnot. She was taken by a Sasquatch and supposedly held captive for a long, long time and was able to escape. Now these are just stories right now there, there, there's no real way of verifying that these are legitimate people have tried but at this point they're still just anecdotes and tales contributing to the mystical lore of Sasquatch these cases of missing people in the mountains and in the national parks are very bizarre they've been um, documented and researched heavily by David Polites of the Missing 411 series and documentaries. Highly recommend checking those out. He's put a lot of work in to these cases and to researching them. He's been actively trying to uncover the mystery. 
So go on Google, go on YouTube, look up David Polites and Missing 411 and check out his work. He's got a YouTube channel. I'll post the link down below in the description. Obviously, if you're not that skilled in the outdoors, it's very easy for something to happen to get lost and to find yourself off trail. You know, maybe you walk off the trail to go take a leak or something, go to the bathroom. It could be easy to get turned around, especially if you're a kid. You know, these were scouts. They probably had a little bit of experience, but not much. The perplexing part, though, is the finding of the items and him completely vanishing. Now, the interesting thing is this San Bernardino National Forest, there's m many cases of missing people. One of these other cases is of a boy named David Gonzalez. He was nine years old, July 31st, 2004. He's at Hannah Flats Campground, I think it was called, in the San Bernardino National Forest. And he was with his mother, and the car that they had was about 150 feet away. And he said he wanted to go back to the car so we could get some cookies that were in there. And the mom said, okay, gave him the keys. He was nine years old. He wasn't like a really little kid. If you remember being nine, I'm sure you had the capabilities of taking some car keys and walking back 100 feet to the car, getting your stuff and then, you know, heading back. But this mother apparently watched David walk towards the car and then she turned for a split second. And then when she turned back to, to look at David, he was gone. The car was never unlocked. The cookies were still in the car. She had just took her attention away for a brief moment and David was gone. A year later, they found his body a mile away in, at the bottom of a ravine. They don't know how he got there. Was he taken by a person? Was he kidnapped? It was at a campground, so there could have been other people around. There most likely was. But there could have been other things around too. Initially, they suspected a mountain lion took him and drug him off maybe, but on his body, like, there was no signs of that. There was no signs of an animal attack or anything like that. They don't know what happened. They don't know how he got a mile away and at the bottom of this ravine. But in this case, the body was discovered. But still, it's a mystery. It was never solved. You'd think at a campground, it'd be, it'd be much easier than on, say, a hiking trail to make your way around. You know, a campground, there's usually dirt roads. You can see other campgrounds. You can see other people. It's really strange how in a split second he was there and then all of a sudden he was gone. And if you think of Sasquatch, you know, it, it means that these things might not be as nice as some people think they are. And they're in the forest waiting, in some cases, to take someone. And in a lot of these weird cases, it's usually a child. And um, sometimes it's a very elderly person. And also there's a lot of cases of people who have disabilities who go missing. There was just recently in British Columbia, I think it was on Vancouver Island, this past December they found a body of a woman who, she had a cognitive disability of some kind, but it wasn't like that crazy. She was able to drive and everything and go do things on her own. And she was an avid hiker and, you know, lover of the outdoors. And she went hiking and she disappeared a year ago. They couldn't find her. They, they searched for a long time. They could not find her. And then all of a sudden, a year later, this past December, they find her body in the same area. It's like she wasn't there. And then a year later, they find her body. It's kind of weird. Like there's lots of theories around that too. Like do these people disappear into a portal <laughs> and then they magically show up later it's it's strange especially you know if they do have dogs and thermal and infrared and whatnot with all these tools at their disposal to find these people they, they can't do it and then magically years later one year later however long it is the body just turns up i find that very unusual but it just goes to show you you never know what's going to happen you never know what's going to happen if you have kids and you're recreating in the outdoors, keep a very close eye on them because this stuff happens. Like, this is real. They don't know what's going on in a lot of these cases. They don't know, you know, if it's a natural thing, if people are just getting lost, if they're getting taken, if they're, you know, getting attacked by animals. 
a lot of times the the uh, puzzle pieces don't match up. You've got to be careful sometimes if you're inexperienced. A lot of times these people are very experienced. But this case of Jared Negretti is very unusual, especially with that photograph. I saw that picture and I'm just like, man, that is one of the creepiest things I've ever seen. It reminds me of that shot in the Blair Witch Project when she's filming herself, when things go really bad. Now, the cases I've talked about are pretty weird, but there's one case that's really, really weird. Happened back in 1952. There was a boy named Keith Parkins. He was two years old. He was out playing on a cattle ranch with his older brothers uh, in Oregon. This was in the month of April, I think. Which April is like not the warmest time of year. At night, it can get pretty cold. Um, he was playing with his brothers by a barn. I think they were looking at a calf or something that had just been born. Um, when the mother of these kids called them to head back for lunch, the two older brothers went and Keith lingered behind at the barn. And the mom was like, where's Keith? Because he didn't, he didn't go with the older brothers. She's like, where's Keith? And they're like, I don't know. He stayed at the barn. Um... So they, the mother, the parents, they went to, to find him and he was gone. He was just gone. So they started searching for him. Eventually they had somewhere up to like 200 people combing the area using more traditional old school search and rescue methods to, to look for him. But there was no sign of him. Eventually, I think three miles away or so, they found his footprints going through a, a cattle field. Now, the, the really weird thing is, is in this case... They ended up finding Keith alive, but unconscious, like face down in a creek, apparently, 12 miles away the next morning. So supposedly within a period of, I think they say it's 19 hours, this two-year-old traversed a distance of 12 miles through forest and mountain terrain. His face was all scratched up. His clothes were all ripped up. But he was alive. How did this kid do that? How did he traverse that distance in 19 hours in the dark? Very, very weird. Highly mysterious. Some suspect a cat could have grabbed him and carried him. Drug him all that way. But it seems weird how he would be alive and not killed or eaten. Do cats do that? I don't even know. Do do mountain lions, cougars, do they kill just to kill? I have no idea. But very, very unusual circumstances. And he survived and apparently had no recollection of the incident. And into adulthood has (laughs) no memory of it. So that's a very, very weird case. What happened to him? How did he travel that distance? Who knows? In the blink of an eye, these people just disappear. And then somehow they turn up, either dead or alive. Most cases, they're dead. You know, somebody stumbles upon the body. But makes you wonder what is actually going on in the forests. Is it Sasquatch? They have an intelligence. They're able to move quickly through the wilderness. They're able to move quickly undetected in the wilderness they can remain hidden is it something even more bizarre like are these people encountering alien beings are they getting abducted by ufos is it a a case of somebody entering a portal and just vanishing these are all theories you'll hear or is it just something easily explainable like a legitimate kidnapping from a human being an abduction from some sort of creep lurking around in the wilderness or is it an animal attack or just simply getting lost maybe a child is walking along and they see a squirrel or a bird or something and it piques their interest so they walk off and they just get turned around that's probably the most reasonable explanation for a lot of these things but It just seems strange that they would end up so far away. You know, it it really doesn't make sense and it really is bizarre. 
But anyways, make sure you check out David Polite's uh, YouTube channel and his work, the Missing 411 documentaries. You can find them online. Um, and he's got a bunch of books that he's written. He, he's done all the work on this stuff and all the investigating. He's like the top guy. So check out his work. There's a link down below in the description. That's all I wanted to talk about in today's video. These cases are captivating. They're very unusual, kind of creepy and make you think, you know, they make you think when you're out in the wilderness, what could possibly go wrong? And, um, you know, just be safe out there and pay attention to your surroundings. Don't do anything stupid. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you next time on Mountain Beast Mysteries.